Well, Ken Miller, after this long process of, of working on Genius, it's about to premiere nationwide. What, what, what's that feeling like for you to, to know that people are about to start watching it? Oh, it's it's really super exciting. You know, as you just said, I, I came on board this project a little over a year ago. And uh, so, you know, we had a very intense concentrated writing period uh, over the summer, last summer. And we started production in September and we shot uh, on location in Prague until the first week of March. And so I've just been uh, in the editing room doing all the post-production. And so it's sort of fun to kind of come out of the cave of of making the project and actually get to watch it in a theater with you know lots of other people and hear their responses and you know um, my kids are going to come see it tonight which is really fun for me and uh yeah it's really exciting for people that don't know or are, are about to watch it it's about albert einstein uh based on the book and um why now why why is it important to revisit albert einstein right right now in 2017 yeah, you know, I mean, I think um, I think the show is very timely for a number of reasons. It's become more timely since we started to make the show. The show is um, uh, it's about Albert Einstein, so of course it is about his um, his uh, great intellectual achievements. But really, it's about Albert Einstein, the man, uh, the man behind the mind. We like to say, and uh, so it really digs into his life, his personal life, his professional life, his personal and professional rivalries, his, his, um, his uh, relationships, uh, his, um, his romantic relationships. Um, but it also deals very heavily with um, Einstein's uh, political evolution. Uh, and, and that is, of course, um, a factor of the times that he lived in. Uh, you know, Einstein went from being somebody in, in his early life who was really apolitical to becoming very politicized by the uh, end of his life. He was really a, a world citizen that was who, who was um, really engaged in all of the big uh, political and social issues of his time. And um, it turns out that Einstein's story is very much a story of of. Of, of immigration and our series tracks the rise of fascism and nationalism in Europe in the first half of the 20th century um, because that is Einstein's story. And as we were making the story, we, we, we saw what was happening around the world uh, politically with Brexit in Europe and um, the election of Trump in this country and um, the and immigration is obviously really a, a major hot button uh, issue of our time and so our, our show became more timely as as it went along the show doesn't have any overt political message it shouldn't but it is uncanny the way in which events of einstein's life seem to be in some ways repeating themselves now uh, and the other really uh, important reason to tell this story i think is is um it actually uh shows what the struggle that einstein had to have his ideas understood uh, and ultimately, Einstein goes from somebody who's very obscure, who isn't listened to, who has a lot of forces aligned against him, to the point where he's really he he becomes uh, a hero to a lot of people and an, a giant international celebrity. And I think in a time where there are a lot of people who uh, dismiss uh, science for political reasons, it's very timely to see the political forces that lined up against Einstein's scientific ideas, but also to see that he he lived in a time where science was really valued and um, and where uh, where this guy could become a hero for his scientific ideas. And um, that's really an interesting story to me. Jeffrey Rush plays the older Einstein, Johnny Flynn the younger. What went into the idea of, for the most, for, for episodes two on, it's chronological, but episode one does go back and forth between the two of them and, and back and forth in time. What, why did you want to do that in the first one? Yeah, well, just to be clear, it's not episode from episode two on. It's not entirely chronological. We do still jump around in time with other characters, and and one of one of our. Um, 
uh, storytelling conceits or strategies with the show was to tell the story in a nonlinear way. You know, so much of Einstein's work was about time and the relativity of time and time not being absolute. Uh, we felt like we could tell a more compelling and dramatic story by freeing ourselves up and not saying that we need to tell the whole story in a chronological way that as storytellers to be able to juxtapose events from different times in the characters' lives uh, allowed us to have more dramatic impact and not not do the standard biopic, which Ron never you know wanted to do uh, from the beginning. Uh, so um, so we thought it was really important uh, in the first episode to set up the conceit of the show, which is basically asking the question, who is Albert Einstein? Why do we think he's a genius? What is genius? And to us, it felt that the way to do that was to um, treat the character in some ways as two different individuals who eventually become the same person. So the question we're asking in this first episode is, how did this very brash, impudent, rebellious young guy turn into this white-haired icon that we all know as Albert Einstein? So how did, how did this one person become this other person. So it's really a journey, it's a story of his life, and we really wanted to set that up in the first episode. And I think we got these two actors who really end up feeling like the same person, like two sides of a coin, and they really embody this character in a really extraordinary way. So uh, you are right that we do leave off with the older Einstein in the first episode, and, and then one storyline catches up with that moment later in the, later in the season. But we do tell other stories of other characters in ways that jump around in time. Ken, we've talked a little bit about the project itself, but what was the moment like? I mean, I don't think you could have found a better actor in the world than Jeffrey Rush. Uh, Oscar winner, Emmy winner, Tony winner, yeah. perfectly embodies Albert Einstein. What's that moment like when he agrees to do the project? It was pretty exciting. I don't know if uh, this came up in your conversation with Ron Howard or not, but he was at the top of our list and we put out some feelers to his representatives might he be interested in this project and we got back some initial positive response actually jeffrey's interested and we got all excited and we made him a uh you know a formal offer to to play the role and he turned us down and we were all so disappointed and uh we thought wow uh, uh we really gotten our hopes up and then uh, I think it was Ron's producing partner, Brian Grazer, who said, well, let's dig a little deeper. Let's find out why, why did he pass? Did he only say he was interested in the first place to be polite to Ron Howard? Or is there some other reason that he uh, is turning the role down? And as it turned out, when we dug a little deeper, what we discovered was that Jeffrey is such a perfectionist and he was so kind of daunted and humbled by the idea of taking on this iconic character, Albert Einstein. Um, and we were on a very tight production schedule and Jeffrey looked at the dates that we were asking him to start work and he just felt like he wouldn't have enough time to really prepare for the role. Uh, you know, he wanted to do it justice and he wanted to feel confident that he was portraying uh, Einstein uh, accurately and interestingly and so we all looked at each other and we said well this is crazy I mean if Jeffrey Rush wants to play this part let's figure out a way to change our production schedule so we ended up doing something really unorthodox and very inefficient um, uh, we, we, we rejiggered the production schedule and we started shooting with a whole bunch of material that didn't involve Jeffrey so that Jeffrey could really have the time to fully prepare. And boy, that was a good decision because as you say, you know, we couldn't have dreamed up uh, better casting than this. And Johnny Flynn, um, where do you find him and, and how, did, how was that process? Wow, what a find. I mean, you know, uh, you know, Johnny, you know, he had a definitely had a career before this. He, he uh, you know, he's a he's a musician. He has a successful recording career. Uh, he's he's uh, uh, appeared on the London stage many times. He's uh, um, been on, you know, you know, he's, he's done a lot of work. It's just, he's not a, not a well-known figure. And when we decided that we wanted to cast a younger Einstein, we put out a, a, a pretty wide search. You know, we were reading and considering actors all over the world in London and New York and, uh, Jeffrey, um, you know, uh, sorry, Johnny uh, came to our attention through our casting director, Rose Wicksteed in London, and she put Johnny on tape reading the part. And I remember this very clearly. 
that Ron and I were both scouting in Prague where we shot the production. We were in a van together and we watched this, this young guy, Johnny Flynn auditioning. And I just looked at Ron and I said, wow, this guy is so much better than anybody else we've read. He understands Einstein. He has this twinkle in his eye. He, he has the mischief that embodies Einstein. He's so much more interesting but he doesn't look anything like Albert Einstein. He looks like maybe like a Hitler youth kid who might want to kill Albert Einstein. You know, Johnny was blonde and very fair and, and light-eyed. And so we thought, and we kept looking, and we couldn't get Johnny out of our minds. And once again, Brian Grazer said, hey, guys, we're in the movie business. Like, if you, if you like this, let's figure out a way to make him look like Einstein. So we sent Johnny's... Uh, photos to our hair and makeup people and we said hey guys do you think we could pull this off and they said yeah we, we, we think we could pull it off and they did you know they um you know he on the, on the show he looks like einstein so and he also looks a little bit like jeffrey they he, they resemble each other so it was really um you know again we got incredibly lucky because he's terrific well i'm so excited I've, i saw the first one weeks and weeks ago and then i saw the other uh, the next two i guess last week so I'm so excited the public now gets to watch all of these episodes. And is there any particular thing about Einstein, if somebody finishes this in a few weeks, that you just really hope they get out of the whole thing? I, I think, you know, he's such an icon. And, you know, everyone in the world, if you say Albert Einstein, they would say, yeah, I, we know who Albert Einstein is. He, you know, he had crazy hair and he came up with some equation, E equals MC squared and some theory of relativity. But that's pretty much what the vast majority of people know about it. It's pretty much all I knew about him until I came on board this project and started digging into his life. And I think that the audience will come away with um, uh, having experienced a portrait of a really extraordinary human being, absolutely a flawed human being. He, he made many mistakes. He He was at times his own worst enemy, but he lived a big, exciting, old, uh, emotionally charged, dramatic life um, that is really exciting. And, and, and I think the audience will finish these 10 hours feeling like they've gone on a journey with a, a really extraordinary human being, but a human being, you know, not, not some, icon, some image on a poster, a real fully fleshed out human being. So that's what I hope the audience takes away from it. Well, it is wonderful. Congratulations on it. I'm so glad you liked it. And it's really been fun talking to you about it.